coal was the fuel of the new industrial age. What was left behind as waste was coal tar. One of the things that you had left over was a goo, a thick, viscous stuff, which um, had no value. Then in 1856, an 18-year-old chemistry student named William Henry Perkin was in his laboratory at home experimenting with coal tar. Malaria was threatening British colonies, and he was trying to synthesize the known treatment quinine. He thought he could make it from coal tar. Well, his first couple of reactions that he tried yielded nothing but brown gunk, uh, nothing like quinine. And this is where, I think, again, in all these cases, is the key step. He just didn't say, okay, next problem. He said, gee, brown gunk's pretty interesting. Instead of quinine, he got this black precipitate that came out of it. He knew that that wasn't quinine, but instead of stopping there, he was curious about this black material and wondered what it would look like. So he filtered it. When Perkin dissolved the gunk in alcohol, he noticed the solution had a deep, rich purple color. He was about to make history. Perkin had made a synthetic dye, and it would be all the rage in Paris. At about the time that he was doing his experiments with his purple dye, which the French called mauve, uh, the fashion people had already decreed that purple was going to be the color. It was the trendy color of the time. 